Hello everybody and thank you for joining me for this video. It has been a while since I did any kind of ladder play or did any kind of demonstration of ladder play. I'm currently Platinum Tier 2 and for the purposes of what I'm about to go through here in this ladder uh, climbing it's a bit of a grind so I'm going to use either Mono Blue Aggro, Mono White Aggro, I might go to Boros, I might go to Saltai, but I think all those deck techs exist already on this channel so I don't think it's going to be too too much of anything we haven't seen yet. Um, I will start off with Mono Blue. Uh, the aggro version of this deck has four Terramanders instead of um, instead of a Miss Cloak Heralds just because they're pumpable later in the game, which we kind of like to do. So we will see how this goes. It's quite the grind, though, and I know if, uh, if you're going for, like, Mythic or any kind of higher level rating, it does take quite a while to get there. I don't do rated games all the time. Uh, maybe I should. I might might do a little bit better if that was the case, but uh, I am in the Platinum tier, Platinum tier 2, and we are going to keep this hand, and we're going to go for Diamond. This is not the way you want to start off having to mulligan down to 5, so we shall see. I like the addition of Entrancing Melody instead of Sleep. Um, kind of serves the same effect of removing creatures out of the way that you don't want to be in the way, and then they come over to your side, so it's, it's kind of nice. Although it is kind of expensive. Hmm, here we go. So I am going to hold on to my Storm Tamer and not play him turn one because he's playing red, so I, I'm assuming there's a shock in there. And I want to be able to protect my Storm Tamer with something. Alright. Don't need any more islands, thank you. Okay, I'll take an island. So that's not going to work out. Once again, I'm going to save the Storm Tamer. This this may work against me. Um, if he starts to show some serious aggro here, we're in trouble. I don't necessarily want to block the uh, the Pyromancer, though, because uh, he's not that big of a threat right now. It's only two damage. I'm not really worried about it. He is going to trigger Spectacle. I just kind of want to see where he's at with it. So he lights up the stage. There's a wizard's lightning and a gutter snipe. Okay. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't hate this. So I'm going to save. I could chart a course, but I want to save the wizard's retort. He may have a shock. If he does a shock, he can't gutter snipe, and then he loses gutter snipe. So of course I'm not going to block. That would be silly. So now we trigger spectacle again. And we will see what happens here with his spectacle. Okay, so it's gutter snipe. We counter gutter snipe. That worked out. I could take it. Smack him for three. But I'll Terramander instead. Get him on the battlefield. Swing in for three and draw a couple. Hoping to get a dive down. There we go. Perfect. So we could be in business. We might not be. We got three in the graveyard to pump the Terramander, so now it's a, a five mana ability. Okay. He does trigger. So that's not ideal. If he attacks, I could block with my Terramander and dive him down. And then in response, he might be able to do something. But you know what? We're going to do that because I'm tired of taking this damage. Yeah, okay, so he could kill him in response at this point. Looks like he's got something that he doesn't choose to use. Interesting. I think we take a Lava Mancer at this point, and hopefully he doesn't have two Lightning Strikes in his hand. Oh boy, even... Okay, so, so yeah, we're going to have to steal... Yep. 
It's one, one. We're gonna have to steal the lava mancer. He's tapped anyways. We're gonna have to save a mana and a blocker. So we will hold back this pteromander. Swing in for two. I just don't want to have him drop something that he could attack me with, like a lava mancer, and then win the game that way, or have direct damage. I could counter direct damage with storm tamer. So I'm not too worried about him having that last, uh, like, lightning strike or something. Now he might threaten my trickster. That's expected. And if I have to sack this Storm Tamer, I have another one. So kind of a risky play to go so slow with him. Okay, this is great for us. Yep. So we're going to attack with... Yep, we'll just go slow. It takes two turns to kill him anyways. And in response, we may have to counter something in response if he if he gets crazy right here. Cool. The right move is to wait until you until you pump your Terramanders in there. But now if he did save up two lightning strikes in a row, this could suck, but we've got lethal on the board. Uh, effectively two counter spells, but we don't have the mana for them. Okay, so here's here's something I don't like. Really, it doesn't matter. The method I choose here doesn't matter, but I do want him to think I've got a Spell Pierce. That still could be lethal, though. He still, still could be in trouble. Maybe I should have blocked with my Trickster early on in the game, but I don't know. I don't know how you play those. Of course. <laughs> he had it the whole time. Alright, so game one down. Oh, the misery. The climb is just, man, it's up and it's down, it's up and it's down. We'll keep rolling. I like mono blue because it gives me a really good chance against control decks. One good counter spell wins that game. Um, but against other aggro decks, it's not great. Uh, you know, sometimes you, go, you don't get enough aggro to counteract the damage you're taking, and there is no healing in it. And if you're on the if you draw against aggro, you're pretty much dead. So let's try this a little differently. We'll play the trickster in response to an attacking little red creature and see if we can't kill it. And we got our Tempest Gen. These are strong against uh, aggro. And I will play the uh, Tempest of Gen turn three. Well, maybe not. We might be losing our Tempest of Gen to a Thought Erasure here. Storm Tamer does not counter things that clear the board like Cry of the Carnarium or Kaya's Wrath or Cleansing Novas, Ritual of Soot, all the, oh man, Ritual of Soot would suck, we would lose everything. Yep, on a razor. There goes what, Tempest Gin, going? Yep. That's not terrific. I really like the uh, eyeball that says it's been revealed. That's a super easy way to play right there. Hmm. What do we got going on? It's Haramander. Interesting. I haven't seen Terramander with search for Escanta yet, so that's neat. Uh, if he attacks, we for sure block it with the Trickster he knows we have. Although, that seems almost like a bait move, doesn't it? Where he's begging me to block his Terramander if he does attack. Uh, Non-creature, non-land, so yeah, he takes a dive down. Either way, I lose one. Now what do we got? 
a black, a white, and a blue mana, and three cards in hand. Okay, so discovery. So at this point, if he attacks, for sure, it's a pretty big misplay. If he doesn't attack, I could still play the trickster. And, uh, and just tap the creature down. Of course, now we might have a dive down in there, so... Yeah, we'll see what he does. Can't counter it with one mana. He could dive down his Terramander, in which case I just let it happen. Okay, that's totally fine. I don't want to block anyway. But he's doing that to get cards in the graveyard, so now he's got five. He could... Uh, he could make it 5-5. Uh, five, five. I'm going to play the other Storm Tamer. He knows I've got it already. I don't know what the harm could be in playing him. Looks like he's just trying to fill his graveyard to make Terramander that 5-5. Five, five, pump the Adapt. Uh, which he could do. Looks like uh, for 3 mana he could Adapt him and hit me for 5. Though I believe it's a little too late for that kind of business at this point. Okay, Hostage Taker, here we go. He knows I have this dive down. So this is interesting. Yeah. He's just trying to draw it out, it sounds like. Looks like. Okay, I'm gonna tear a mana of my own. Not enough mana to do anything with it. But. Yep, I'm gonna swing in. Yes, he's going to kill one of my tricksters, but I still sneak in for a solid three damage. I don't think he blocks with that Terramander. Okay, now he's at five. All of a sudden, this is quite the threat. Although I don't have the mana. Ooh. Curses. <laughs> Islands. All right, we'll take an island. That's fine. Four, five, six, seven. So I will have the ability to adapt my Terramander. And maybe he'll gain block or give his Seraph Vigilance Death Touch. I don't know what he's going to do. This is tricky. It's going to take all his mana to do his Terramander, which he could do, and then just save it for a blocker. Hmm. Vigilance, but not Death Touch, so we'll take four. It's the, uh, the price of it, that's all. Hmm. We could send everybody in, lose a Trickster to the Hostage Taker, or the Seraph for the Scales. But then two of my Storm Tamers get in. I'm just going to do it. Let's just see what happens. He could adapt, right? He has to block my Terramander. He doesn't have an option. With his Terramander. Okay. So he's going to take a net of one. There goes all my mana. He ends up being at four. Well, okay, I don't like this either. I think that Seraph is going to ruin the party. Oh, he's got another Terramander, so that'll... That'll do. So mono blue isn't working. I think I'll switch it up and try some mono white. Of course, the moment I play mono white, we're going to get the mirror match and just lose to faster white aggro. And we are on the... We are on the draws. So okay, well, we can't win this game. We're good here. Before he attacks, I have to block. He attacks again. 
See, I can't stop the Seraph of the Scales. He's going to have Vigilance and give anything Death Touch. Even if I draw into a bigger creature, it's going to die, and then he'll have the Afterlife. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are going to lose this game. So I'm going to go ahead and concede. I think we're good here. I've seen enough. That's two losses in a row that I don't like. That happens in the ladder. It really does. You just got to move on. Really, it's not about winning a whole bunch of games in a row. It's about figuring out what's going to work that day. And I think we're going to be on for Mono White. Hopefully. Although I've seen this deck get a little faster recently with the addition of like How's the Marshal and uh, like four Healer's Hawks, four How's the Marshals, four uh, Dauntless Bodyguards. This is kind of nice. Fourth turn unbreakable formation with. Benelish Marshall out if we're in that kind of business. That would be nice. Adanto is good protection against uh, board clears that aren't Cry of the Carnarium. Cry of the Carnarium gets us. There's a shock. Oh, a Lava Runner. Okay. I'd much rather see a Lava Runner. Thank you. I'll go with the Adanto. And he bought himself a turn, so we can't attack. We can't attack. Nope, 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 nope. Doesn't make any sense. And I believe we're on for a Marshal turn three rather than Sky Marcher. We'll do Sky Marcher turn four. Of course, you could sneak a Johnny into this deck. He works pretty good, except for he can't bring the uh, Benelish Marshal back. But he could bring everybody else back pretty effectively. The right move is to attack, yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Because even if I block with my Vanguard, I could pay four life to make him indestructible, but how silly would that be? I just that wouldn't make any sense. Cool. Alright, here we go. Oh boy. <laughs> how nutty is this gonna be? Okay. He's got to do some serious clearing this turn, or we're going to have... We're in business. We are officially in business. So he's got to kill my Marshal and, and my Token. He can't kill my Vanguard. I will pay the life for that. There goes the Token. Okay. Pew, pew. See ya. Lightning? Okay, Wizard's Lightning. Alright, so he's done it. Okay, that's that's terrific. Oh, boy. Okay, so we've got the Sky Marcher. And we have enough mustard to do it. We're gonna go and go for it. Still in business. Still doing okay here. Mm-hmm. That was right on time. This guy's a first striker, so that's pretty powerful, although... Another one? Okay, good. <laughs> how, how terrible would that have been? He just drops another Chain Whirler on us with the, uh, the Steamkin. Although the right play is to attack first with your Steamkin, then take the mana off. Um, but... Are you kidding me? That was quick. No city's blessing. I will drop Unbreakable, though, and swing in for a few. And they're indestructible this turn, and they're vigilant, so they don't tap. And they will make for healthy blockers. He could pump his Steamkin one more and then kill my Snubhorn. Hmm. Okay. He's going to kill somebody. He'll probably shock the Snubhorn. We will 
able to decline the risk factor, let him draw, and hope that he didn't just draw a mountain. If he didn't draw a mountain, that's game in our favor. But he probably has a mountain and a shock for the Sky Marcher, and that would do... Oh. He's also got the Steamkin, right. It's down to three mana. Another Steamkin and a Mountain. Okay, this is close. That's his blocker. blocker. So there's a couple of cards we could really use right now. Drops the Steamkin again, does another risk factor. Is that the plan? So we're going to have to let the Steamkins resolve. And definitely, obviously, decline. He draws three cards. Ooh, it's not ideal. So he'll have to block my Vanguard. And then either one of these two. Doesn't have to block both, but either one. One or the other. Then I can flip Legion's Landing make a blocker. Mm -hmm, dead. Oh, that's game. That's good blocking. Okay, cool. Now maybe he just didn't didn't feel like doing it. Alright. So Mono White wins. There's some life gain in this deck too, and for some reason I wanna say that I edited it earlier to include a Lyra Dawnbringer. I may have, I may not have. Sometimes I forget what I have in my decks, and I'm like, well, I remember it's mono white. That's all I remember. Again, it looks strong. But we will see if we get Thought Erasured or... Or if it's Bractos, it's actually not as scary with a Snubhorn Sentry in hand, so he only attacks for one now. Although, instantly triggers Spectacle, which isn't great. So does Vyashima, but, okay. I'm pretty sure I can deal with this in the long run. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get a Danto down first. And then we'll do Healer's Hawk. Um, well, I'll do Marshall into Healer's Hawk, potentially. Okay, so there's Spectacle. I'm going to do this. It's going to hurt. But I feel like with a little life gain, I can recover from that. And then he does one damage to to the Snubhorn? Or does he do it to me? Yeah, go for it. We'll go slow. We'll slow it down a little bit. Hopefully he doesn't have a Spawn of Mayhem in there. Fanatical Firebrand is okay. Gotta watch out for these guys. He's a 2-1, but he can also hold them back and then do one damage like the Benelish Marshal or something. Oh, nice. So he plays Judith to trigger the Judith. Okay, so check this out. So Judith dies. He's picking the one. Okay. And then does one damage. It's great. Yeah, go for it.
Yeah, so I'm gonna... Well... Yeah, so I'm gonna make him indestructible on the first tick. That way he can't wait and prick him with the firebrand and make me take four life and I lose him anyways. And now he's a totally acceptable blocker. Uh, that was risky. I get it. But let's see what happens as a result. He will think twice about attacking, for sure. Yeah. And here's my strategy with this guy. We are going to unbreakable formation in the main phase. Everybody gets vigilance. I cannot attack with my healer's hawk, but it gets that very valuable counter on it. And that's my life gain, so I'm going to use my Healer's Hawk to hopefully get some life back unless he gets casted down. But, in either case, here we come. They've got Vigilance, they've got Indestructible, I don't worry about it. He could take 9 and keep his creatures alive, but then I still have my blocker, so I don't, I don't really worry about... Unbreakable Formation really helps me not have to make decisions. <laughs> Just... Just play it and attack. Ideally, they would get haste, uh, but that's a different card. So he opts to take 9. It's a fairly fascinating choice. He could prick me with the firebrand. Footlight Fiend doesn't get haste. I'm fine with that guy. He doesn't attack with Judith, that's for sure. And I fly right over him with my healer's hawk and I'm pretty happy about that. So we're going to slow the game down just a touch. Hopefully, hopefully that's not a cast down. Cool. Any creature that dies, he can choose two damage to any source. So he could kill my marshal. Yep, so he could... He could do two damage. That's two. To the healer's hawk, and then he's going to sack his firebrand and kill it. Mm hmm. But now he's virtually given me a window here. Oh yeah, the okay, so the Judith damage went to me. Hmm, tricky business. Oh, you know what? I think we are gonna trigger the city's blessing. Yep, we'll do it. And we'll attack with both my vanguards. I feel like I've got enough of a health pool to make this massive threat to him. Um, he may block my, yeah, my 4-2. I'm not going to save him. We'll put homie at 1. He gets 2 damage, 1 from Judith, 1 from the Fiend. Those both go to me. Yep, yep. And I, he's got to have a creature to block or, yep, okay. So Mono White is the answer tonight. Seems to be working okay. Only until we start losing. Or seeing more, <laughs> more Mono Red with massive amounts of removal. That happens every once in a while. I, I don't particularly love Dual Legion's landings, but I am going to hang on to one because I feel like I have enough to play in the opening where if it, if I lose one or if, uh, you know, I get it to flip, then I can play the other one. I kind of like having two bodyguards to play with, too. It's nice. So I can go next turn, Sky Marcher, Bodyguard on the Sky Marcher, then down the road if I can get the fourth mana, Mar Benelish Marshal, and then Bodyguard him, but... We'll we'll see what happens. He might shock the 
shock the token. Oh, he saves the token. Okay, cool. So we go Marcher, and we go Snubhorn. And then he shoots the, the Sky Marcher. Yeah. See, that's that's the play. So you, typically you, you want to uh, bodyguard your dude, but then while you're bodyguarding your dude, they'll just prick him, and then he dies. They never block with the uh, Steamkin, that's not his job. Or I could bodyguard both of my tokens to get the third mana. I might have to do that. Of course. I hope he does this in his main phase. No, nope, not blocking. Nope, nope. I'll take three more. Such is life. <clears throat> okay, decision time. I wonder if I can play the bodyguard, because he can't see who I choose right away, right? So in response, he's going to have to... Yeah, he's going to have to pick who he wants to uh, to kill. I wouldn't save the token anyway. And we'll pass the turn and hope he doesn't have an amazing turn full of removal. He could firebrand kill the bodyguard. He could cast one more red spell. He could shock and then take the counters off the steam can and go nuts. Okay, so that this is going to be, be a pretty wild turn. So there goes... That terrible play. It's too damage to me. He attacks. He attacks with the firebrand? No, he doesn't. Boy, so I'm gonna take four. If I let this through, you know what? We're gonna block. I don't want to be taken four. That's too much damage this early. And if I can slow him down enough, I'll have a chance at winning. Yep, takes out the, the bodyguard. He's protecting the snubhorn, so we may as well use him to make the snubhorn indestructible. Just in case he's got some shenanigans up his sleeve. There we go. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Boy, this is risky. He has a shock. That's the one red mana that he's got. Is a well, no, it could be holding priority for the Steamkins. Oh, you never know. No attackers just yet. Mm -mm. Oh, there it is. Okay. And he shocks the Snubhorn after he takes two and he dies. See if we can't come away with a win after all. Something tells me we can't. Hmm. And he's got haste, right? He most likely does. To block him down. Not sure what good we're That's game. Yep. Alright. Carry on. The Mono Red, why are these guys still in Platinum? Mono Red is pretty strong. They just must be getting going with it. This is, uh... This is a crazy day. Of course, there was that big tournament today in, uh, on Twitch. I think everybody's motivated to play and, and climb to Mythic now, and it's just wins and losses back to back to back to back and then you're you kind of get nowhere after a while but that's sort of how rated play goes that's why I don't do it all the time too because it just kind of drives me bonkers man <laughs> these hands look so strong and then you see uh, you see a mountain come down and it's just so disheartening please be a tapped steam vent that's what I want to see it's a tapped steam vent I want to go against is it Drake's 
Nothing crazy. This is a crisis deck. I may not wanna. <laughs> I may not wanna continue. Or maybe this is the time I can get out and get up and under it quick enough. There's no way he blocks with that Llanowar Elf. They never do. Of course, he's too valuable alive. Walker. Okay, so he's digging for land. This is a great sign. Oh, yeah, the Memorial of Folly the whole time. Um, yeah, so we do attack with all three, even though our snub runs a 0 3 because we want to flip the land, right? So that flips, Legion's landing. Now we've got the four. <coughs> he blocks down. Dauntless, that's fine. Although that's a pretty good move because Dauntless would, um, he's still a knight. I'm gonna protect the token because he's a knight and I want to save him. I want Benalia to take off and do some crazy business. So let's see what our opponent has to offer here. He's gonna be playing some removal, like finality might come into play here. This has got to be a non-land card, right? Okay, a branch walker. Does he graveyard that? He doesn't. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna play my hand. Hopefully this isn't an, an example of overplaying my hand. Could be. Yep. Let's get after it. He blocks down the token, for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, I could sacrifice Dauntless to the token, but fundamentally it doesn't matter. Actually, it does. Uh, I like the token better because it's a 2-2, and Dauntless is a 2-1, so it, we may as well sack him. We lose a creature anyway. May as well be in control of which one, and now we've got two knights that will hopefully get the ticks from Benalia. We can't do, we can't make another token. Okay, if Roska's would come in handy next turn for him. So hopefully we can sneak away. Hmm. He might be able to make enough trade so we could block down my two big knights and the Adanto. Unless we draw into an unbreakable formation. Ah, what are the odds? We can do a Sky Marsher. We have the City's Blessing, and then we can still make more tokens. So, let's see what trades we end up with. He does have a Vra... Oh, no, he graveyarded the Vraska. So, without a doubt, he blocks down and kills my tokens, right? And then he's on the hook for seven. Or... Four. This is still kind of worrisome. I wonder how many more control decks we'll see in the ladder now that they've banned Nexus of Fate also. Okay. So he's taking 10 here. He must have some... He must have a Wild Growth Walker and some more Explorers in there to be taking this much damage. Which worries me. Any kind of life gain sort of puts the game back in his favor. The longer he delays it, the longer it goes before he can get that Hydroid Crisis out with some massive counters and it's a 10-10, he draws 5 cards, gains 5 life, and really makes my day miserable. Okay, cool. So right now it would be a... he could make it a 3-3, I think. He's got a total of 6 mana. Oh, rats. Can't save the Adanto from that. I've done that before. Alright, 
Clock's sort of ticking, sort of. He's gonna folly? Is anybody worth follying? A uh, branch walker, maybe? And we will make another one. Wait. Uh, yep. Does he have that merfolk that comes out? Cast down. He's got to cast down a token because the damage is going to start to pile up on him. Um, so I feel like this may be how this game ends. This is this is terrible. May as well folly somebody, you know, like a jade light. I don't know. Now if he's got a wild growth walker and can sneak away with a victory here, I will. I will cry. <laughs> Hostage taker? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yep. So we're going to do a tribunal. On the Jade Light Ranger. And then sneak in now if he plays. He's got to play two creatures. So he could hostage. Well, no, he's got the hostage taker. Um, so we get a hostage taker, a token, but he doesn't get the token. They disappear. Is that it? Frosca's. He gains two, goes up to three, takes one. Drop Legion's Landing, get the token, and the turn. Make another token, Hostage Taker takes the token, we can swing in for uh, only two. Now oh, poop. There goes the Krasis. I like, I like this Krasis deck, it's kind of neat. So no hostage taker. A Benelish Marshal wins the game for me. Oh, that was stupid, wasn't it? And I was gonna take him. They're both untapped, it doesn't much matter. He blocks one. Does he life gain? He just tramples and flies, right? Okay, so he takes two there. And he gets the third blocker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gotta figure I'll draw something decent here. And find a way to sneak away with a with a good victory. I don't hate bodyguard. I also don't love bodyguard, so let's see what we got. We'll swing him with everything. He can easily block two of them down and kill them. Wonder if he's gonna block with the vanguard and accidentally click on him and pay the life. <laughs> no, okay. Fair enough. Corn is strong, rats. I will fight so choose the one he gets. Choices, choices. There's the walker. Oh boy, the timing on that was pretty good. Oh, come on. Did I miss my token? I think I did. Oh, no, I didn't. I made him when Karn came out. We're good.
Okay. Top deck and victory. Mm-mm. I've lost so much already. Mm -hmm. I won't lose more. Draw. Now does it explore again? Terrific, it does. He gains the six, and he's probably at a place where he's going to start attacking with the crisis now. And he's turned the game around to a point where we just can't sneak away with it. Yeah. Yeah, he's got us. No penalty, Marshall. Hmm. No Luxodon. No unbreakable formation. Awesome. We really didn't get one, huh? That's kind of amazing. I mean, that certainly won't be the case every game. Of course, we're. <laughs> Got a Sky Marcher. I've seen Depending on what he pulls here, if he gets another, another, oh, it's a walker. So does he do a walker and then grab the branch walker and then gain another six life? He does. That's the right move. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You've won the game. Good luck. Yes, I'm at 31 health, but he can easily overcome that. So you know what? Let's do. I've got a version of that deck, and I think it's pretty, pretty good too. I'm gonna try and play that one. I want to get a couple of wins in here. It's like I don't know how these guys can do this ladder all the way up to mythic, and it's just I guess two out of three, uh, best of three, is a little easier to do it. Or I guess they just play mono red and and go ham. Alright, and I get to go first, which I like much better. Okay, cool. So we do forest, into woodland cemetery, into walker, branch walker, all the good stuff. This figures to be a pretty powerful deck, also. Okay, so now... Should we slow the game down for him and cast down his elves? I think we do. I think that's too powerful of a card to let him just have one. I don't know if I should have saved that for something else, but I feel like that mana ramp was something he might have been relying on pretty heavily. Oh, I don't have an... I don't have one. Why don't we do start exploring on, on our own here? Now we're on for a crisis. Dope. Nope. Chain light. Yep. Cool. So we skip the incubation druid and go straight into Vivian Reed and start digging. And I gotta think this game's close to over at this point. Where do we go for. You know what? Let's do a crisis. A 3 3. I'm fine with that. But I do want the flyer. That puts him at one, and we will survive. He's got a lot of mana over here. Gate, gate. Is this a gate deck? So the walker would survive a gates ablaze. Though if they die, I can find two of them, so I'd get the walker and the crassus again. I don't. Okay, gates ablaze. Now everybody dies. I think that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Taps the, the dude for the mana. Walker lives. It's not a gate. Right. So now he's got to shock him or something. 
Of course, I'm on for a find. I'll grab my Krasis and Jade Light, and then drop the Jade Light, I think, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And we'll, uh, same, oh, so now we'll grab the Walker. And the Krasis. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that idea. I'll drop the walker. So we'll branch walker into some more goodies. And we've got Vivian and Karn ready, queued up. Does he have haste? Nope, just vigilance and trample. Yeah. Unbelievable. I still don't have... <laughs> That's fine. This is 15, I can take that twice. Gate Colossus doesn't trample. I'm gonna take it. Now if he has another Gates of Blaze, we're in trouble. He's turned the game around, unfortunately, on us, and I don't like that at all. He's got an Archway Angel. Okay, it's 14, that's not too bad. wasn't meant to be contained. This is nothing. If he can gain more life, I don't like where this is going to go. So, early cast down might have helped me out a little bit, but now I want that cast down back for that Gatebreaker Ram for sure. He's counting mana again, look at that. So you're going to put the, uh, okay, so now I have to, okay, go, go after Viv, that's fine. And me? Wait, does it got menace? Oh, two or less. Oh, 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 so he's like a steely. Oh, wow, okay. I did not catch that on that card. So I take a grip. Alright, that's Just not very like fun. Shalai's coming down. Oh boy. Okay, okay. Let's see what we got going on. I want the explorer again. And I know what it's gonna be. We'll throw it in the library. So attacking doesn't do us much good, but we could gain block in some creative ways here. Whenever a gate enters the battlefield, put it on top of your library. So Gate Colossus is pretty strong, but he does tap. Yeah, he sees it too, so he's holding back. Nope, I'm killing it. And we are going to simply jump block. What does he have in there? Oh, that's his plan. Hmm. Man. Gate control for the win. It's a rough day. It is a rough day climbing the ladder. I'll tell you what. I have faced worse than the light. I'll make use of that later. So we get the jade light? Oh, the walker. It doesn't matter. This is a trample. We are in too sad a shape. This is, again, such close games. Man, I wonder what we could have done to get the win. 
I don't think we are going to sneak away with this one unless we can... Even if we draw into a removal, we got to get Shalai out first. Having Shalai in this deck is, is a cool idea. He never attacks with her. There he goes. She's not Vigilance. He must have another Archway Angel. Two for each gate. Yeah, he must have another one. Oh, another. Okay. Is this of his own? Of course. I really wish I could have grabbed something else there, but I couldn't. So now, I'm almost certainly dead. I've got to stop three damage from the Gatebreaker Ram. I could chump block the Colossus. I could chump block the Crisis. I can't. So you, you get chump locked. Oh, rats. Oh, this is, okay, that's game. I can't possibly block enough. So I've got to block the Gate Colossus with either Shalai or Krasis, and then the Trample kills me. That's nine. Yeah, rats. Okay, all right, you win. That's unfortunate. Unfortunate, all right. Son of a biscuit. And <laughs> I'm losing rank. I'm not going... Okay. So, as always, we take a break when we start losing rank too much or else I get inside my head. So, it's tough out there if you guys want to climb the uh, the ladder. Um, it is rough. It's uh, tough going. But this is how it goes. It goes up and it goes down. I mean, you can see I'm platinum tier 2. And uh, I got up to tier 1 the other day and it got back down. It's it's tricky. You just got to keep going when, uh, when it feels right, when you're making good plays and when you're getting pitted against good uh, competitors too, like good matchups for your decks. So that's important. But anywho, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate all the support. Have a good one.